Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. The Hunter's Moon for 2010 and use the moon to hunt for Jupiter. Hey there, Stargazers, I'm Chris Trigg. This month, the moon will be doing double duty as it first helps you to make sure you know which bright light in the night sky is Jupiter around October 19th, and then it will serve as this year's Hunter's Moon on the 22nd. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for October 18th, 8.30 p.m., facing southeast. Now, sometimes when stargazers see the moon, it's not always a welcome sight, as the moon can ruin an evening stargazing. But this month, the moon will help you find Jupiter. Monday, October 18th, the 11-day-old waxing gibbous moon will be about 15 degrees to the right of Jupiter. Or think of it this way. Find that big bright moon in the southeast, then look down into the left of the moon, and that bright white light is the king of the planets, Jupiter. The next night, October 19th, the moon will be a bit bigger and brighter, and even closer to Jupiter, only 6 degrees above it. The moon will be about 250,000 miles away, and its light will take only one and a third seconds to get here. Jupiter will be 1,500 times farther away than the moon, 380 million miles, and Jupiter's light will take almost 34 minutes to reach us. The next night, October 20th, the moon will have passed on beyond Jupiter, but will still be close enough that it can still be used as a signpost for you Jupiter gazers. This October is an especially good time to take a look at Jupiter because it's just past opposition, which means Jupiter is still very close to Earth, which makes it even brighter and bigger than usual. Another reason to take a look at Jupiter this October is that Jupiter's great red spot is easier to see in a small telescope or even with binoculars because Jupiter has, temporarily at least, lost one of the dark equatorial bands that circle it. The south equatorial band has faded since last year at this time, and with this band out of the way, the great red spot is easier to see. This fading of the equatorial belt has happened before, but Jupiter onomers don't fully understand why it happens. And an even better reason to keep watching Jupiter is that this south equatorial band will likely reappear quickly with little or no warning. Again, no one can tell you quite why. Maybe you'll be the astronomer who will figure it out. Now let's switch gears and talk about the moon. The full moon you'll see rising in the east after sunset on Friday, October 22nd is traditionally called the Hunter's Moon, and it's the next full moon after the Harvest Moon. Its name refers to the time after the harvest has been finished, when the fields have been cleared, which makes it easier for hunters to see and catch animals and birds to add to the harvest feast. Now, full moons happen on average every 29 and a half days, so they don't match the months exactly. In fact, some years have 13 full moons. The moon has been credited with all kinds of influence on human affairs, but none of it stands up to scientific scrutiny. Because the moon has such a strong influence on the tides in the ocean, it's often wrongly assumed that the moon has a strong influence on us as well. The reality is far different. A mother holding her child will exert 12 million times as much tidal force on her child as the moon. But the moon still gets blamed anyway. So use the moon to verify which light in the sky is the planet Jupiter on October 18th, 19th, and 20th. Then go out Friday night and enjoy the hunter's moon on October 22nd. Keep looking up. Make the Stars Your Own is available on DVD or VHS for $19.95. In addition, Stargazing with Jack Horkheimer, Cosmic Comics for the Skywatcher is also available for $19.95.